Hello to my wonderful 66 subscribers and welcome back to Lack Place. Today we're doing another episode of the never before heard of indie game expose and review. Let's get going. Be sure to like and subscribe. The game that we're analyzing today is called The Underscore, and it's by a developer named Crescent, who I believe has been working on it entirely as a single developer. The game falls along the lines of Slay the Spire and Monster Train in the roguelike card game genre, with a few twists self-described as minimal randomness within cards and character actions, two separate customizable decks, minimal deck shuffling with a predictable queue, three possible actions per card, which is actually a feature that I found really interesting and will comment on later, and a deep sci-fi world. Right, so that just about covers the brief. Let's get on to the meat and grit and my analysis points. The game is set on a sci-fi alien planet and your goal is to beat encounters to get through to a certain objective. You do so by building your decks and by finding your way through various obstacles. This is a strategy game and in order to beat it you're going to need to be doing a lot of thinking. Now the graphics for this game are impressive for a browser game, 3D environments are not easy to render. However, it did lack a bit of texture and the polygonal shapes did get to me a bit, but I'm assuming that in the Steam version of the game, it's going to be a lot more polished. Overall, I definitely think this is a stylized game, and it, while it might not be my taste, it's, it, it's good at what it does. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. The gameplay of this game is hardly a question, absolute 5 out of 5, it's innovative, it's creative, it works well. I really enjoyed it, and I think that it's worth checking out. The system given with three choices for each card to use is very effective in minimalizing the randomness of each turn, and allows for you to turn a bad situation good for you very quickly. But it is still punishing, and some of the enemy stats are <laughs> pretty tough, especially the last final boss in the game. So even with this good gameplay, is the final game fun? I'm gonna give this a yes, it's, it's an interesting game. It's not really for me, but it was fun the time that I did spend playing it. So, yes out of yes? Going on to potential, I just want to redefine what this topic is going to be in this series. This is where I give my main things that I think that the game could really thrive from improving on. Now, to start this off, I'd like to talk about this game's lore. Now, I know there is lore. Could I find it? No. And I wanted to because I wanted to know what enemies I was fighting, what alien life forms I was trying to defeat, why I was actually going about this mission, but I, I couldn't find it. It should be accessible. I want to be able to right-click an enemy, and then I want to be able to see a little pop-up come up, tell me what they are, what their primary, um, not necessarily stats are, but something that tells me what it does, more so than just obstacle in my path. Besides that, I think this game has a lot of potential to become liked by the community because it's different. I think that indie card game players should check it out and review it because I am by no means an expert at card games. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more of a casual <laughs> game enjoyer than an expert. So go and ask other people with this game and get proper feedback. I, I think that the best thing that you can do with a game like this at the moment is to get a lot of exposure for it and get feedback from people who like the games, who like the genre. Research heavily, which, <laughs> what am I saying? I'm sure that Kepler's, Kepler's has done so much research into card games because it's not easy. I made a really crappy card game when I was younger. Heck, I think I made like four or five card games, and all of them were pretty terrible, to be honest. 
So that about sums up my thoughts on potential of games. So I was able to reach out on Reddit to Crescent and get a comment for other young game developers and upcoming game developers, anyone really. And his comment was, solo dev is hard work, but ultimately is super fun. My words of encouragement would be, release it. First time someone plays your game and gives positive feedback is an awesome experience. Don't let your game stay only on your computer for too long. So that's pretty decent advice. Don't let your games stay as your games. Let them become a community's love. So if you think about games as a whole, they're based on community, not so much an individual experience. Sure, solo games are important too, but games, even solo games, they bring people together and really allow you to have a cultural experience with people from all around the world. So imagine if your game could one day become something like that. If you could make the next Hollow Knight, if you could make the next top game on Steam. That's about it for today's video. It's a bit shorter than normal, but I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, thank you, Crescent, for letting me review your game, and I wish you all the best with it in the future. We're almost at 70 subscribers now, so thank you if you've subscribed. I love you all, every single one of you. When we reach 100 subscribers, I will do that video with my dogs for you all. So keep subbing, keep watching, and tune in next time. Bye, everyone.